So you want to start audio editing, but you don't know where to begin? Don't worry, I've got you covered with a fantastic product called Reaper. I'll take you from knowing nothing of audio editing to being decently proficient. You'll be able to edit, mix, and create audio journalism work like news packages, podcast editing, and much more. First, a note about backing things up. Everyone expects everything to go perfectly. Well, life happens, and then you're stuck. Protect yourself and back up your work. Whether it's audio, photos, text, or videos, always back up your work. There is a handy rule from computer science circles called the 321 backup rule. First, have three copies of everything you care about. Then make sure that you have it in at least two different formats. That means one on your hard drive and one somewhere else, like an external drive, your phone, an SD card, a USB key. Are those still a thing? Anyway, lastly, have one offsite backup stored online. Because if your place is burglarized, if your office floods, or a pandemic prevents you from accessing your files physically, you'll still have a backup in the cloud, which you can use to continue your work. Dropbox, Google Drive, all of these services are relatively cheap, especially when you think about time and money costs associated with having to redo everything. Back up everything you do before you start, then back up as you work through your project, and back up again once you finish your work. Form good habits and you will succeed. Whenever you're working on a project, good file management will be critical to your success and how fast you can complete your edits. Label and organize your files into folders for easy access. Start by creating a folder for your project. I like to name mine JOR whatever the class is. In this case, 288. Then the assignment number, and then my last name. Then inside of that folder, I like to create a folder for audio, for photos, for my scripts, for my videos, and an extra folder in case there's something I need to keep around, like a PDF and an event, save web pages, forms, all that good stuff. Then organize your media into those folders. And I mean organize. Rename and label your files with pertinent information. And as you're renaming, Make sure not to change the file extension at the end accidentally. Setting good habits allows you to succeed long after others have fallen. I always recommend, no matter whether you're a Windows, Linux, or a Mac user, to download and install the Swiss Army Knife of Media Players, Videoland Client, or VLC. It's open source and free. It's an exceptionally robust and great media player to test your final audio and video files before submitting them online for distribution. Now let's jump into Reaper. Reaper, or the Rapid Environment for Audio Production, Engineering, and Recording, is a digital audio workstation available for Windows, Macs, and Linux. It's around $70 US for a personal or non-commercial license. What's refreshing is that they give you a free evaluation trial that doesn't expire. They're so sure that you'll love the software, they just politely remind you to purchase it even if your 30 days are up. And as somebody who used it for more than 30 days and finally did buy it, I can guarantee you You will want to support this company for making such a great piece of software at an affordable price. Head over to reaper.fm to get the latest edition and install it on your machine. For journalism work, we'll be using Reaper for multi-track editing to get really precise with our edit and find the perfect moments to share. First, gather all your recordings, footage, and scripts and organize them into a project folder. It's important to rename and label your files with crucial information for clarity. Recording number whatever isn't going to be as clear as year, month, date, time, location, and subject, and any extra information you might want to add. Now go ahead and launch Reaper on your machine. Once open, go to the top menu bar, point to track, and then select insert new track. That puts a brand new track to either record into or add media, which is what we're going to do. Next, turn off the snap to grid function by selecting the magnet icon right over here and making sure it's off. Snap editing is useful for music creation, but not so much for voiceover and journalism work. We've made some changes, so it's important to remember to save. You can save your project by going to the top menu bar and selecting File, then Save Project As, then saving your project to the audio folder in your assignment folder. Be sure to keep multiple versions as you edit, in case you want to return to a previous draft after making a change you didn't like. Before jumping into editing, it's going to be essential to get into a workflow that saves you money and time, because as journalists and creatives, we rarely have either. I recommend using the Passes Editing workflow. A pass is where you go through all your audio content once to script and sculpt your edit. When working on a project, you'll need to do this at least four times. The first stage is the rough chop. This is where you cut up your sound and place it roughly within the timeline of your project. You use this pass to get rid of extra information. In this case, audio that you know you won't use. The next stage is the lineup, where you finalize and lock down the sequence of events you want to present to listeners. After that comes the volume automation or effects stage. At this point, you'll start paying attention to the individual volume levels of clips so that your final mix is balanced and consistent in its audio level range. 
And lastly, there is the final pass. That's right before you submit or distribute. Use that time to check everything to make sure it's perfect. You won't waste time editing things you won't use or correct volume for clips you won't need by following this order. Remember, speed is directly linked to not only being familiar with the software, but also how familiar you are with the material. Now let's go ahead and start importing your files into Reaper. Go to your audio folder and select the files you want to bring in. Then drag and drop them into the left side column right under where your new track was placed. You'll see a prompt asking you whether you want everything on a single track or separate tracks. Choose separate tracks. Once it's done importing everything, go ahead and save your project immediately. With your new tracks in place, you'll see that the track titles are automatically generated from your files as names. You can rename them to be more specific by double clicking on their name and entering a better label. In this case, I'm renaming Test Clip 1 to Interview and Test Clip 2 to VO for voiceover. You can also rearrange tracks to fit your preference. As well, you can get rid of a track you don't need. Let's do this with the empty track at the top. First, select it, then go to the top menu bar and select Track and click on Remove Tracks. You're probably wondering, how do I start, stop, and play stuff? Well, go to the bottom left side of the screen and you'll see your playback control. The button over here takes you right to your project start, and this button takes you to the end. Very useful when working on an edit. Next is the record button, and right next door to that is the play button. You also have a stop and a pause button. You can also use your spacebar key on your keyboard to start and stop your project wherever your playback head is located. While working on your project, you may want to mute or highlight specific portions of your work to be extra precise with your editing. There are some great tools to help with that. Do you see these M and S buttons on every track? Those are muting and soloing buttons. Soloing, when selected, will mean that any time that the track is played, that track will be heard. Muting is the opposite, where the track will not be heard while playing. You can use both of these functions simultaneously over multiple tracks, and each track features both buttons. Let's say you have some rising music that plays in your project, but you want to focus on the voices first before the music. You can choose to mute that track while you work. Inversely, if you only want to hear your voice, you could select the VO track and solo it, which is what we're going to do right now. One of the critical points of editing is using zoom controls to get hyper-precise on where we want to cut. Look over at the right side of the screen in the middle, and you'll see the zoom controls, both labeled plus and minus. This one changes the view so you can see your waveforms better by increasing the track size. And this one allows you to zoom in to get to the exact right point where you want to cut. Once zoomed in, use the playback head to find the exact moment you want to split your clip. The crunch time is here. The crunch time is here and then click inside of the waveform on the track to select it. Next, hit the S key on your keyboard to split your clip into two pieces. You can move the playback head as many times as you want and hit the S key to make even more cuts. Once you've made your cut, you'll probably want to remove some of that excess audio. Select the audio pieces you wish to remove and then push the delete key on your keyboard. Just a note, the way that most audio software works is that it doesn't physically delete your file. So if you want to restore it to your project, no worries, you can re-import it back in. As well, there are undo, copying, and pasting functions just like pretty much every other application. And since you've made some significant changes, it's probably a good time to go ahead and save another copy of your project. I'm going to go ahead and cut through all my takes in this particular voiceover, and I'm going to try to do the best I can. And make the air. Abe Hefter, ruling Radio King, recalls one time when he was just the court jester, and he forgot to actually record. They record. But Hafter says, never fear, proper preparation prevents poor performance. However, students won't be... However, students won't be walking as the deadline for their assignments... However, students won't... However, students won't be walking as the deadline for their assignments comes up next week. AJ Cordero, Concordia News. However, students won't be walking as the deadline for their assignments comes up next week. AJ Cordero. Next week. AJ Cordero, Concordia News. Colin, so what do you want to talk about today? Let's talk about uh, the importance of uh, a technically clean report in radio and uh, how important is that. So what's the biggest technical glitch that you've ever experienced when you were reporting? Uh, probably the most frustrating thing is um, going to interview somebody and you've got your machine on or you think your machine's on and you do a great interview and you walk away and then you listen to your uh, report or your tape again or for the first time and there's nothing on the machine. 
because there was a malfunction with the machine or perhaps you uh, pushed the wrong button, you never recorded. And at that point, unless you're lucky and uh, can double back and talk to that person again, basically you walk away empty handed. That sounds rough. It's happened to everyone, it happens to all of us. But do you have a war story particularly that you want to... Well, um, boy, um, nothing in particular. Just in general, I can remember uh, being in the locker room on a number of occasions again and you walk away with what you think is a great interview. And uh, I can remember after one particular uh, incident, it was after a, a, a Blue Jay baseball game when I was working in uh, Toronto and uh, got a great interview with a pitcher at the time, walked away, nothing. And I waited and waited and waited and hoped to get that pitcher back out of the locker room again or out of the dressing room, actually. And he never showed up. So I walked away empty handed. Oh, yeah. rough, rough. Well, these things, they happen, don't they? So check check your gear. Make sure your, bun- your uh, batteries are functioning. Make sure when you turn on... Your recorder, you see uh, the levels moving so that you know it's recording so that there are no nasty surprises uh, when you walk away. Looks like I'm going to have to use two actualities. Thanks so much, I Walk away with what you think is a great interview. And uh, I can remember after one particular uh, incident, it was after a, a, a Blue Jay baseball game when I was working in uh, Toronto and uh, got a great Got a great interview with a pitcher at the time, walked away, nothing, and I waited and waited and waited and hoped to get that pitcher back out of the locker room again, or out of the dressing room, actually, and he never showed up, so I walked away empty-handed. Oh. So I walked away empty-handed. Well, these things, they happen, don't they? So check check your gear, make sure your, bun- your uh, batteries are functioning. Batteries are functioning. Make sure when you turn on your recorder, you see uh, the levels moving so that you know it's recording so that there are no nasty surprises uh, when you walk away. Students are now scrambling to get their content. Students are now scrambling to get their content. The crunch time is here. Students are now scrambling to get their content together to make both the grade and make the air. Abe Hafter, ruling Radio King, recalls one time when he was just the court jester and he forgot to actually record. Got a great interview with a pitcher at the time, walked away, nothing, and I waited and waited and waited and hoped to get that pitcher back out of the locker room again or out of the dressing room, actually, and he never showed up, so I walked away empty-handed. But Hafter says never fear. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Batteries are functioning. Make sure when you turn on... Your recorder, you see uh, the levels moving so that you know it's recording so that there are no nasty surprises uh, when you walk away. However, students won't be walking as the deadline for their assignments comes up next week. AJ Cordero, Concordia News. So now this project is starting to sound like something that could be broadcast. But the levels between different clips are all over the place. You must present the listener with a harmonious and balanced mix. That doesn't mean everything is loud or everything is soft. But it does mean if music is overpowering your voice, that's wrong. If it's too weak, that's wrong also. Make it easy for your listener to understand your story. After all, bad mixes mean your story doesn't get heard. Think of how many times you've clicked a link on YouTube and the audio quality has been so bad that you leave the video, even if it has useful information. Don't let your story remain untold because of inadequate technical practices. To smooth out our levels, we're going to use a technique called volume automation. Essentially, you tell the computer when to raise or lower the volume, and it takes care of it for you. This is very useful if you want to create fade-ins or fade-outs on audio, if you're going to regulate spikes in your audio when someone or something gets too loud or a touch too soft. We can all try and fix that using volume automation. You should know that if you record things correctly in the first place, volume automation on most projects will be minor. If you find you are continually boosting or lowering your audio, you need to look at your recording workflow because something there isn't working and it's causing you to do extra work. And nobody wants to do extra work, right? To enable volume automation, first select the track you want to automate. Then select the trimmed button on that track. A floating window will appear and inside of it, tick the box next to volume. You'll see a new graphic window appear underneath your track. Then, using the command key and simultaneously clicking, draw dots in the window that represent the volume you want. Then, when you play back your project, voila! Performance. Batteries are functioning. Make sure when you turn on your recorder, you see uh, the levels moving so that you know it's recording. The computer automatically adjusts the volume to what you need. When you walk away. However, students won't be walking. We're getting to the final stages of our project, but there's one thing left to consider before everything is said and done, and that's mastering. 
Mastering is where you make your project competitive volume-wise to other mixes that you could hear on the radio, online, or anywhere your project would be played. This method uses the free LoudMax plugin, which you can download at loudmax.blogspot.com. Follow the instructions on their website for installing it on your operating system. Then save your project, close Reaper, restart your computer, and reopen your project. Once back inside of Reaper, click the FX button on the Master Fader channel right here. In the window that pops up, start typing in LoudMax until you see LoudMax by Thomas Munt. He's the fabulous person behind this plugin and who gives it away for free, so thank you Thomas. Double click that and the LoudMax interface will open. Start by setting your threshold to minus 22 dB and your out to minus 2 dB. You'll notice everything becomes way louder, so make sure to adjust your headphones. This is only a starting point. You'll need to change the sliders to prevent unwanted effects like distortion or loud background noise. Mastering your project reveals its flaws, most of which are preventable by recording things correctly and watching your levels. Speaking of levels, play your project and watch them. The crunch time is here. Students are now scrambling to get their content together to make both the grade and make the air. Generally, most of your levels should hover around the negative 12 zone, negative 6 for peaks, and negative 20 for valleys. With a picture at the time, walked away, nothing. We're in the final sections. Hooray, you made it this far. See, basic audio editing isn't so hard. It's just time consuming. Before getting ready to export, check the requirements for your project. Some places want different things. We're going to generate an MP3 and a FLAC file. Once you're ready to export, go ahead and save your project. Then listen back to it in its entirety to verify that everything is how you want it. Then go to the top menu bar and select File, and then choose Render. We're going to have to make quite a few changes to get this perfect. Under Output, set your output directory. That's where you want your finalized file. For the file name, follow the convention of the semester, year, class, assignment number, and your last name, just like your folder structure. Also, it's probably a good idea to save your file to your assignment folder. Then, under the primary output format, select the following settings. The format should be set to MP3 and mode to constant bitrate, CBR. Under Quality, set it to maximum or zero. And finally, under bitrate, select 320 kilobits per second. Then click the secondary output format. Under Format, choose FLAC. And then under FLAC encoding depth, choose 24 bit. Lastly, under Data Compression, choose 8 for the slowest. Then click on Render Two Files at the bottom of the window. What's going to happen next is that Reaper will generate two files, a super high quality MP3 file that will sound good everywhere, and a FLAC, which is a perfect quality file which you can use for archival purposes. Once the process is done, select Close and find your files on your machine. Open your folder where you have your files, and then open them up in VLC and listen back to them. Make sure there are no errors or mistakes. The crunch time is here. Students are now scrambling to get- Things like accidental distortion, missing clips, forgetting to turn off a mute on a track, all these kinds of things can ruin a great project. So take the extra time to verify everything is perfect. Once that's done, go ahead and start backing up your entire project so it's ready to go should you need to return to it. An easy way to do this is to zip the file using your operating system and then upload it to online cloud storage or a backup service. Before we finish off, I have a few best practices to recommend. First, make sure to top and tail your file. That means do not have silence at the beginning of your files. Get right to the action. This helps producers time their newscasts correctly and gets your listener engaged right from the start. If you're starting your project by fading in music, make sure we can hear the music slightly within half a second. Also, make sure that your work is submitted to time. If you're asked to deliver a 30 second project, don't submit a five minute clip. Checking over things helps to avoid these occasional mishaps. Use crossfades for cleaner edits. That's where you fade one clip out and fade the other clip in. It helps to avoid abrupt endings between sections. Another useful trick is to have room tone. Whenever you go out to record, get 30 seconds of audio of just the space. Stick your microphone, smartphone, or whatever you're using close to the sound source, hit the record button, and stay silent. You can then place the room tone in another track in your project so that edits in your interview track can blend seamlessly. Lastly, remember the context of your work, and don't take someone out of context. You're not a comedian, you're not The Daily Show, you are a journalist or an editor. If you do take someone out of context, you'll have the shortest career in journalism. One of the questions I always get is, how do I get better as an audio editor? And there's a pretty straightforward path that I can recommend. First, start by listening to local news stations. In Montreal, listen to CBC Montreal, CJ8800, or 98.5 FM in French. Listen to them once a day for one of their drive-time newscasts, either from 7 to 9 in the morning 
or 5 to 7 in the evening. That's when they have their biggest audiences since most people are stuck in traffic. You'll hear how they present their stories, what angles they choose, and you'll notice how often they end up speaking to the same people over and over again. More importantly, you'll hear how they edit their pieces together. Then, I recommend aiming to edit and work on one project per week, which you should review with an experienced editor. Aim to get to this level within one month. From there, continue what you were doing before, but add some better stuff to your media diet. Take a listen to Radiolab, listen to long-form documentaries, and other high-quality podcasts. See how they approach a story, what they choose to highlight, and how they use natural sound. Now start adding to your workload and aim to edit two projects per week. I would still recommend reviewing each edit with an experienced editor. As well, now it will be time to begin developing your social media channels with links to your work. Aim to be at this level within three months. Keep building from there, and within no time, you'll have plenty of work and a following. Everyone wants to start a podcast, but nobody wants to do the editing. Keep working hard at this, and you will reap the results. That's the basics of audio editing with Reaper. Thanks for watching. Now you guys, gals, and non-binary pals, get out there and tell some great stories.